Every once in a while, you come across a theme plugin or tool that you wonder how the f*** is this free? And that's exactly what I thought when I saw today's recommended tool for WordPress, Depictor. This is a slider based tool that allows you to create interactive sliders that include video, images, animations, interactions, all manner of different things. Think of something like Slider Revolution, those kinds of tools. However, this is 100% free. Now, all credit goes to Andrew McKim over on the WP Tuts Facebook group who recommended checking this out. And that's exactly what we're going to do in today's video. So first of all, let's just simply hop over to the official website and take a quick look at what we have. Now, bearing in mind, this is totally free. There may be a premium version later on down the line. I don't know, but everything I'm going to cover in this video is 100% free. So we can see we can go ahead, download directly from here, or we can download from the normal WordPress repository. We can take a look at the templates and we can go through and find out a little bit more about the actual plugin itself, what it offers, some of the templates, those kinds of things. I would recommend having a little look for yourself to kind of get a feel for it, but hopefully the video will give you enough information for you to at least go ahead and try it out. If we jump over to the templates, this will now give us a section where we can see and test any of the templates that are included as part of Depictor. So once you kind of come through, you might think, I like the look of this one. You can click, open it up, and you can get an on-screen preview to see exactly what this looks like. You can go ahead, you can interact with it. You kind of get a feel for exactly how this is. And as you can see, this looks pretty, pretty, you know, pretty fantastic, to be honest. I've already gone ahead, though, and I've installed Depictor. And let's go ahead and take a look at the interface and see how you can get started and just some of the multitude of features that are included in this free plugin. So once you install Depictor, you're going to get a new section in your dashboard called Depictor. Inside there, you can see we've got the option to, well, basically open the Depictor panel. I've already had a little play about with this very, very briefly, but let's go from the start. Let's go ahead and just create a new slider. We'll click on Create New. This then shows us pretty much exactly what we saw on the website. We can use this to take a starting point, or we could, if you wanted to, start completely and utterly from scratch. Just for ease in this example, let's go and find something that I like the look of. Let's use that same one. We could preview it, or we can go ahead and import it with all of the settings and everything already as a great starting point. Let's do that. Let's import this. So once that's downloaded all of the assets and pull in everything it needs, we're now taken into the actual editor itself. And as you can see, there's an awful lot going on here. There's a ton of options. It's integrated directly into some stock photos, or you can use your own images. You're not limited to only working with the stock images. However, there's an awful lot of stock images that if you want to use them as a great starting point. But let's have a quick look at what's included. Let's see down the left hand side, you can see that we've got our stock photos or we can go into my photos and then anything that's been uploaded, anything that's included, any of the sliders you may download as part of the starter points, they'll kind of be listed as well as your normal media library inside your normal WordPress. You can see we got all the images inside there so we can easily change anything we want. And that's one of the things I really like about this. It is very, very easy to change things. For example, let's just say we wanted to just change this picture of this young lady for something different. We can simply drag it over, drop it where we want, and it's updated. There's no selecting things and then faffing about to kind of make sure you get in there. And you can easily just come into this and you can adjust this. If you double click, you can see we can go ahead, we can resize this if we want to. So you can easily drag this around, resize anything you want. You can resize the container it sits in. You can change it, you can do what you want. Then when you're happy, you can click outside. I also notice that you've got a lot of options over on the panel on the right hand side that allow you to do things like adjust opacity. You can have these kind of funky effects if you want to. You can arrange things, you can choose the origin point, the X, Y position, the width, the height, any rotation you want to apply. You can flip it horizontally, you can flip it vertically. You know, you kind of got everything you should need to be able to design this. One of the things I like about this, if you come from a tool like Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer, any of those tools where you've got all the layout and the spacing options, Figma is another good example. A lot of that is included in this when you're designing things to make sure everything actually aligns the way you want it to. So it's really nice to see it's very designer focused. So you can see very, very easy to come over and make changes. You want to change any of the text, you can simply come inside, click, and you can edit anything, anything in there you want. And again, like I say, there's all those lines that show you exactly how things are spaced out. You can easily resize any of these boxes by simply grabbing any of these handles. You can rotate things. 
it's a designer's dream, to be honest. It's very, very easy to work with. If you want to see what it's like across different devices, well, you can just switch between your desktop, tablet, and mobile. And then if you want to make any changes on any of those devices, you can do just that. And then if you want to test it out, see what it looks like, you can click on Preview. And this will then show you, in this example, what the mobile version would look like. Flip it over to Tablet, flip it over to Desktop, and we can see exactly how they look. We can interact with them. You can see it's very, very easy. And hopefully what you can also see is it's very smooth and quick and seamless to work with, which is one of the things that makes it an absolute joy when you're actually creating things. Okay, so we've kind of seen some of the basic things we can do here. Let's take a look at some of the other options. Let's flip this back to our desktop. Let's set this up to be fit so we can see exactly what's going on. Let's come back at our stock images. If we take a look on the left-hand side, much like Photoshop and a lot of other design tools, you get all these different icons. You want to insert text, you can click and you can choose to insert some predefined text, which you can totally and utterly style and customize to your heart's content. You've also got combination styles. So if you want to change something and drag and drop any of these in, you can do just that. So for just an example, let's just delete some of these just for testing things. And we'll just say we want to drag this in. You can see we literally just drag it onto a design, let go, position it as we see fit. If you want to change any of the sizing, you can do that. And like I say, all the little sort of options to customize, make sure everything is lined up the way you want, your spacing is consistent. All those are inside here as well. All those guides are there. Then we can simply select this, come over to the right hand side and you can see we can change the typography. If you want to change this for something completely different like quicksand, you can see we can do that. We can adjust the various different weights. We can make this larger or smaller. We've got full control over all these different aspects of the design. We can even go ahead and simply go and undo any of these changes to kind of put everything back to the way it was. So let's go and put it back. There we go. So you can see it is really, really easy to work with. And these starting points make the whole process of designing really quick and easy. If you want to drop in videos, you can do that. And again, you can see we can pull in videos from YouTube, Vimeo, stock videos, or we can go and choose our own custom, or we can even go ahead and simply upload. If you want to use shapes, we've got a ton of options inside here for shapes, stock vectors, my vectors if you've uploaded your own. For example, if you open up these frames, inside there we've got a huge selection of different kinds of frames. So you can see if you don't have access to lots of stock images, video, those kinds of things, you have a ton of available directly inside the plugin itself. And then we've got buttons. If you want to insert buttons, we've got a range of different button types. And finally, you've got your controls, which is how you can control how people step through if you were using more than one slide. As you can see, we've got these little arrows, but if you wanted to change those and put something different in, you have quite a lot of different options inside you. And it's just nice to see that you can drag these in, customize them, job done, no problems at all. If you come over then, we jump over to the options, for example, you can see inside here now we can control various different aspects of the slider itself, the overall slider, not a specific slide. So you can come to general, you can change the name, your slug, your layout. You want to set this to be auto height, the actual content size on the various different devices so you can handle the responsive sides. You come back out of this and you've got things like then for your navigation, so you can control how you interact with the slides. You've got your sliding animations. In other words, how each of these transition between each other. So you can see this gives us this sort of sliding effect. But if you wanted to, you could change this to something else. We could say cube, for example. Once that's loaded in, we can then go ahead, test it out. And you can see now we get a cube effect. And if we want to, we can customize the effect, the dolly effect. We can change this between horizontal and vertical. We could test that out one more time. And you can see we can easily customize this to our heart's content. You've also got your loading options. So if you want to put in the little loading symbol, just so people can see something's happening, you can choose how the lazy load works on here, the animations you want to use for the loading screen. There's a ton of options. Coming to advanced, you can add in custom styles if you want to, simply using the selector to target what you want. And finally, you've got your callbacks. So you can choose how your callbacks would work. A little bit of an advanced feature, but good to see we have these kinds of things in here. Let's come back out of this. Let's just go back into our slides. If you want to switch between any of the other slides or add another slide in, you can use the options at the bottom. So if we want to jump to the next slide, we can click. If you want to add a new slide in, you can click the new slide. And then you can just customize how all of this looks. You can select anything on the screen and then you have a ton of options on the right hand side as we've seen already. But you've also got more options inside here. We can choose the image name if we've got an image selected, the responsive size so we can make sure that this is using different sizes for different uh, sort of 
formats, whether you're using desktop, tablet, or mobile. So again, you can optimize this. You can show on all slides. You can set the various different things. So for example, the navigation, you'd want that to be in the same place on all your slides. You simply select that and choose the option to say show on all slides. And you can see that's exactly what's happening. You can choose the hover effect, the animation effect, so your animation for your in and your out. And you've also got actions. So what happens when someone clicks on the slide or any other kind of interaction, whether it's mouse in or mouse out, you can choose to do things like go to URL. You know, if you've ever used any other kind of slider tool, you'll be familiar with a lot of the options, but this being free is insanely powerful. You can also come over if you want to, and you can publish any changes you make. And inside there, once you publish those, you can see it gives you the short code to work with, or you can use PHP code. If you want to insert this into your custom coded templates, you could do that. Lots of ways in which you can use this. And all you need to do is simply copy that, copy that from there, use that short code anywhere in your designs, and that will insert this particular navigation, this particular slider, whatever it is you kind of create. You'll also notice We've got general, which allows us to customize the name of the slide and the background colors and so on. Coming to advanced, again, we've got those CSS options for this particular slide. And we've also got data sources. And data sources are available in various other places. And you can see we can reference the WordPress post and we can choose things like categories, tags, what posts you want to exclude. So you could create your own custom slider inside you that features your most recent posts, your recent products, those kinds of things. And you can pull in any of the various different component pieces of those posts. So things like your featured image, your author's name, content, date, and so on. So there's a ton of options in there. You can change your source, but at the moment, that's the only source. So I'm assuming that this is where maybe the premium version will start to add things in for things like advanced custom fields or meta fields, those kinds of custom th features. But Straight out of the box, you have so many options. If you want to test your animations out, you can click on it and just check everything is looking and working the way that you want to. You can also go ahead, delete this, duplicate it. You can rename it. You can undo. You can view invisible elements if you have hidden things on your design. So many options. And then when you're finished, you can simply go ahead, use that shortcode and insert it into your design. Now, I've already had a little play about, as I showed you right back at the beginning, and I've just pulled in a template using the Astra theme, totally free theme, and I've just inserted my custom slider at the top. So you can see all the animations are in effect, everything is set up, all working, including an overall page with quite a few images in it. So I just run a GT metrics test to see what kind of impact we have. No optimization other than whatever is being used on the InstaWP, which is a service that I use to spin up uh, sort of WordPress websites very quickly. So minimal when it comes to the options for optimizing. But the results are actually pretty respective. Yes, there's room for improvement. However, like I say, we are literally just over a two second load time or largest content per full paint, I should say. With a little bit of tweaking, I think we could get this up, up into the top 90s with under two second load times. You can see it tells us there's a few things we want to address, things like using a content delivery network, CDN, eliminate render blocking resources, things that you generally have to deal with when you use WordPress. But I think it's pretty impressive that you have all those options available in a totally free tool. And it actually is pretty well optimized for working with your websites. But that's just my thoughts. This is Depictor. I would recommend taking a look for yourself. Hopefully this video has kind of like whet your appetite. But let me know, have you tried it? What did you think of it? Would you try it? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time. Take care.